Sheffield United Football Club is a professional football club in Sheffield, South Yorkshire. They compete in League One, the third tier of English football. The football club was formed in 1889 as an offshoot of Sheffield United Cricket Club, and are nicknamed the Blades due to Sheffield's history of steel production. The club have played their home games at Bramall Lane since their formation in 1889. Sheffield United won the league in 1898 and the FA Cup in 1899, 1902, 1915 and 1925. They were beaten finalists in the FA Cup in 1901 and 1936, and reached the semi-finals in 1961, 1993, 1998, 2003 and 2014. They reached the semi-finals of the League Cup in 2003. Sheffield United were promoted to the Premier League in 2006 but were relegated in 2007. They reached the Championship Playoff Final in 2009 but were relegated to the third tier of English football in 2011. History Sheffield United formed on March 22, 1889 at the Adelphi Hotel, Sheffield by the president of the cricket club Sir Charles Clegg. The Wednesday had moved from Bramall Lane to their own ground at Olive Grove, and the tenants of Bramall Lane needed to create a new team to generate income. Sir Charles Clegg was incidentally also the president of the Wednesday. Undoubtedly United's heyday was the 30-year period from 1895 Euro 1925, when they were champions of England in 1897 Euro 98 and runners-up in 1896 Euro 97 and 1899 Euro 1900, and FA Cup winners in 1899, 1902, 1915 and 1925, finishing runners-up in 1901, and also 11 years after their cup final win in 1936. United have not won a trophy since 1925, bar those associated with promotion from lower leagues, though they did reach both domestic cup semi-finals and the first division playoff final in the 2002 Euro 03 season, ultimately losing all three matches. Their darkest days came between 1975 and 1981. After finishing sixth in the first division at the end of the 1974 Euro 75 season, they were relegated to the second division the following season and three years after that setback they fell into the third division. They reached an absolute low in 1981 when they were relegated to the fourth division, but were champions in their first season in the league's basement division and two years afterwards they won promotion to the second division. They did fall back into the third division in 1988, but new manager Dave Bassett masterminded a quick revival which launched the Blades towards one of the most successful eras in their history. Successive promotions in the aftermath of the 1988 relegation saw them return to the first division in 1990 after a 14-year exile. They survived at this level for four seasons and reached an FA Cup semi-final in the 1992 Euro 93 season before being relegated in 1994. They would remain outside the top flight for the next 12 years, although they did qualify for the playoffs under Bassett's successor Howard Kendall in 1997 and caretaker manager Steve Thompson in 1998. They were struggling at the wrong end of Division 1 when Neil Warnock was appointed manager in December 1999, and a financial crisis was preventing the club from being able to boost their squad, but in 2002 Euro 03 they enjoyed their most successful season for a decade, reaching the semi-finals of both domestic cups and also reaching the Division 1 playoff final, where they were beaten 3 Euro 0 by Wolverhampton Wanderers. Three years later, however, Warnock delivered a Premier League return as the Blades finished runners-up in the rebranded Football League Championship. They lasted just one season back amongst the elite, before being relegated from the Premier League amidst the controversy surrounding Carlos Tevez, with Warnock resigning shortly afterwards. The club struggled to come to terms with life back in the Championship, with a spiralling wage bill not being matched by the quality of the players brought in, and a succession of managers within a short period of time. Despite a brief flirtation with success as the team reached a 2009 playoff final under Kevin Blackwell, the club entered a period of decline. The 2010 Euro 11 season was a disaster, with the club employing three different managers in the space of a season, which ultimately ended in relegation to League One under Mickey Adams, meaning they would play in the third tier of English football for the first time since 1989, 
and only five years after gaining promotion to the Premiership. In the 2011 Euro 12 season, the club finished third in League One, narrowly missing out on automatic promotion to rivals Sheffield Wednesday, and entered the playoffs. With victory over Stevenage in the semi final, United missed out on an immediate return to the Championship after suffering a penalty shootout defeat to Huddersfield Town. The Blades again made it to the League One playoffs in 2012 a Euro 13 after a fifth place finish, but were knocked out by eventual promotion winners Yeovil Town on an 85th minute goal in the second leg of the semi finals. On September 3, 2013, it was confirmed that Saudi Prince Abdullah bin Mohsad bin Abdulaziz Al Saud of the Royal House of Saud had bought a 50% stake in United's parent company Blades Leisure Limited for the fee of a £1 with the promise of providing substantial new capital with the aim of returning the Blades to the Premier League as quickly as possible. Name origins and nicknames The club was formed by members of the Sheffield United Cricket Club itself formed in 1854 and the first English sports club to use United in its name. Sheffield United's predominant nickname is the Blades, a reference to Sheffield's status as the major producer of cutlery in the United Kingdom. Because of this, the nickname would also be used in reference to rivals Sheffield Wednesday. Another nickname used was the Cutlers. In the early days, the two teams would be differentiated by the grounds they played at with United being referred to as Linites, while Wednesday would be called Grovites, as they played at Olive Grove. In 1907, Wednesday came to be referred to as the Owls, in reference to their new ground in Owlerton, meaning that United could claim the Blades' nickname for themselves. Within Sheffield fans of the club are also sometimes referred to as Uniteds. When Sheffield United purchased Chinese club Xingduano in 2006, they redesigned the club crest in the style of the Sheffield United badge and renamed the team Xing Blades. Kits, Colours and Crest Sheffield United have played in red and white stripes for most of their history, but began playing in white shirts and blue shorts. They briefly played in narrow red stripes for the 1890 Euro 91 season, before returning to all white the following year. The stripes returned in the 1892 Euro 93 season with black shorts replacing the blue in 1904. The shirts remained largely unchanged until collars were first removed in 1955, replaced by V-necks until the 1966-67 season, and from here on the neck style varied. The traditional red and white striped remained until the 1974-75 season, when elements of black were added, until the 1979-81 and 82 season kit. This was white with a red breast, and with thin stripes down either side, and was created to accommodate the logo of the club's principal sponsor, Cantors, a local furniture shop. This was to be replaced by a striped kit, with the sponsor Bentleys and Renault written vertically down a white stripe over the left-hand side. Stripes continued while the 1995 Euro 96 season, albeit with various aids to accommodate the sponsors including a yellow square for Lever from 1988 to Euro 92 and a black hoop, also for Lever in the 1994 Euro 95 season. Then came the diamond kit, which was so badly received that the club reverted to stripes the following season. Since then, red and white stripes and black socks with varying trim have been the order of the day, with black shorts for all but the 2002 Euro 05 seasons, when white and then red were tried. The club also every few seasons opt to put thin black stripes between the red and white stripes. Sheffield United's home colours were the inspiration for the kit of Irish club, Derry City. In 1934, Derry City adopted the stripes, while Billy Gillespie was manager of the club, in recognition of Gillespie's achievements at Sheffield United. The first time a crest appeared on the shirt was in the 1891 Euro 92 season when a red crest appeared on the white shirt, but this disappeared the following season. United used the city of Sheffield's coat of arms from 1965 Euro 77, when a new crest was used, introduced by former manager Jimmy Searle, but designed apparently over 20 years previously by former player Jimmy Agan. This consisted of two white crossed swords, or blades, the club's nickname, with a Yorkshire rose above, on a black background. 
This is surrounded by a red ring with Sheffield United FC written around the top in 1889, the year the club was founded, underneath. This had been altered very slightly a few times, with a simple black embroidered crest appearing on shirts from 1987 a Euro 90, and an all-white crest on a red-edged black shield for the 1992 a Euro 99 seasons, but reverted to its original form in 2000. Shirt Sponsors and Manufacturers Ground Sheffield United play at Bramall Lane, near the centre of Sheffield. Bramall Lane is the oldest major league ground anywhere in the world, having hosted its first game in 1862, a match between Hallam and Sheffield Club. Bramall Lane also hosted the world's first ever floodlit football match on October 14, 1878 with two teams picked from the Sheffield Football Association. The power for the lights was provided by two generators. The crowd was 20,000 and the score to a Euro Zero. It was originally a cricket ground and the first important match played here was between Yorkshire and Sussex in 1855. A cricket club was formed in 1854 named Sheffield United Cricket Club and Bramall Lane was leased to the club by the Duke of Norfolk. The ground was opened with a cricket match on April 30, 1855. Yorkshire County Cricket Club also formed here and played most of their games in Sheffield at Bramall Lane until the last match on August 7, 1973 against their old rivals, Lancashire. The ground has seen expansion in recent years, and by 2006, on completion of a 3,000-seat corner stand, was an all-seater stadium holding 32,609. In March 2009 the club were officially granted permission to expand the stadium once again, over two phases. The first phase would have seen the cop being extended to increase the ground's capacity up to approximately 37,000. It would also have seen the removal of the main supporting pillars and a giant screen installed as part of the stand's roof. The second phase would have seen the Valad stand also extended, bringing the total capacity to a 40,000 all-seater. The expansion would also have had a secondary focus of being available for selection for FIFA World Cup matches in 2018 or 2022, if England's bid were to be successful. However on December 16, 2009 the Football Association announced that should England's 2018-2022 World Cup bid be successful then any games played in Sheffield would be staged at Sheffield Wednesday's Hillsborough Stadium. Following this Sheffield United's chief executive, Trevor Birch, made it known that all planned ground redevelopment had been put on hold until the club was able to regain and maintain premiership status. With the club's relegation to League One in May 2011 any ground redevelopment would look unlikely in the near future. Supporters, Sheffield United derives support from a broad cross-section of the community. The majority of football fans in the S2 postcode of the city are Sheffield United fans, particularly the Sharrow, Healy, Highfield, Manor and Park Hill areas of the city. There are also a lot of supporters in the S3 areas, close to the city centre, S8 and around the Gledless area, a strong contingent from the Dern Valley, with a large supporters club from Swinton in particular. The club usually run two or three special student deals each season, and so also have a small student following, based in the suburbs of Crooks and Broomhall. Rivalries Sheffield United have numerous rivalries. The most notable rivalry is with their city neighbours Sheffield Wednesday, with whom they contest the Steel City derby. Some United supporters refer to Wednesday and their fans as pigs, and some Wednesday fans return the compliment. Sheffield United's other rivals are mainly other teams from Yorkshire, such as Leeds United, Barnsley, Rotherham United and Doncaster Rovers. West Ham United have also become fierce rivals due to the TV's saga and the following lawsuit charges. Sheffield United also have, along with many other sports teams across Yorkshire, a strong rivalry with Nottingham Forest. This can be attributed to the miners' strikes of the 1980s, where workers in the pits of Nottinghamshire did not join the strike while miners from Yorkshire did during the 2002 Euro 03 season. In the playoff semi final second leg, United came back from 2 a Euro 0 down to winning 4 a Euro 3. This match fueled the rivalry further, and in 2014, when United knocked Forrest out of the 2014 FA Cup fifth round, winning 3 a Euro 1. Famous supporters 
Supporters of note include former managers Mickey Adams, and Neil Warnock, actor Sean Bean, former sports minister Richard Caborn, MP, the singer Paul Heaton, musicians Joe Elliott, Anthony Genn and Todd Lati, television presenter Anna Walker and author G.P. Taylor. Olympic laser class sailing gold medalist Paul Goodison has followed Sheffield United since he was a youngster, Alex Hammond, athlete Jessica Ennis, boxer Kel Brook and cricketer Joe Root. Former player and current Northampton town manager Chris Wilder and Alan Hodgkinson, former Blades goalkeeper. Michael Palin also grew up supporting the club. Former Premier League and England striker Kevin Davis is an avid Sheffield United fan as are Spurs defenders Kyle Walker and Kyle Norton. As a boy Argentinian legend Juan Sebastian Verón dreamed of playing for the Blades. Sky Sports presenter Charlie Webster is also a Blades supporter. Red Hot Chili Peppers bassist Michael Flea Bolteri is also known to a Blade supporter, after he confessed his love for the club at the Reading Festival in 2007, and again at the Sheffield Arena concert in 2011. Spectre drummer Danny Blandy is also a Sheffield United fan. Sky Sports commentator John Rawling is also a Blade supporter, a fact mentioned many times on BBC Radio 5 Live's Fighting Talk. Peter Doherty although a well-known Queen's Park Rangers fan, has also sang the Greasy Chip Butty song at a Baby Shambles gig, at a local venue called The Lead Mill. Chants, like many English clubs, Sheffield United supporters have a wide variety of chants and songs, the most famous of which is the Greasy Chip Butty song. Many are intended to berate Sheffield Wednesday, the most popular of which are, never felt more like swinging a pig from Hyde Park Flats to Adsley Bridge United. You've got me swinging a pig as you do, as you do, as you do. As well as no pigs fans in town no Hillsborough to sadden my eyes Jack Charlton is dead and the pigs fans have fled and the year is 1889. Fans have also been known to sing Are You Wednesday and disguised to poorly playing teams a Euro in attempt to undermine both the opposition and Sheffield Wednesday. Songs played before kickoff at Bramall Lane include Meet Her at the Love Parade by Dahul. We Took Pelham by Deadly Avenger, United by Judas Priest and If the Kids Are United by Sham 69. These songs are known to fans as the countdown to kickoff, with the teams originally entering the pitch to Adagio for strings or two steps from Hell's Heart of Courage, but now the Star Wars theme by John Williams. During the FA Cup run of 2014, local band Section 60 made their song Champions of the Underdog Sheffield United's unofficial FA Cup anthem. Players, current squad, as of October 3, 2014. Note, flags indicate national team as defined under FIFA eligibility rules. Players may hold more than one non-FIFA nationality. Out on loan, note, flags indicate national team as defined under FIFA eligibility rules. Players may hold more than one non-FIFA nationality. Former players. Player of the Year. A Player of the Year award has been presented since 1967 to recognize the player who has made the greatest contribution to the club over the course of the season. Initially organized by the official supporters club the award was voted for by their members although it was presented as an official club award. In recent years the award has been presented at a gala end of season award ceremony and dinner, usually held at the end of April, and voting has been widened to include a broader section of the club's fan base. The first winner of the award was long-serving goalkeeper Alan Hodgkinson and the most recent recipient is defender Harry Maguire who has now won the award on three consecutive occasions, a feat only equaled by Phil Jadieka was presented with the award in three consecutive seasons in 2005, 2006 and 2007. The player with the most award wins is striker Alan Woodward who was named winner on four separate occasions between 1970 and 1978. The longest gap between wins by a player is seven years. Keith Edwards had two spells with the club and won the award during both, in 1977 and 1984. Academy and Reserves Academy Sheffield United's Academy is responsible for youth development at the club. It has produced such players as Tottenham Hotspur defender Kyle Walker and Everton defender Phil Jadieka, both England internationals and also Tottenham Hotspur defender Kyle Norton, 
Aston Villa fullback Matt Lowton and Hull City defender Harry Maguire. The academy building and training facilities in the Sheffield suburb of Shirecliffe were opened in 2002 by then Minister for Sport Richard Caborn. Sheffield United Academy U18s currently play in the FA Premier Academy League U18s Group D at the Shirecliffe ground at Fishill Crescent, and finished as runners-up in the 2011 FA Youth Cup. Non-playing staff, managerial history. Early days, at its formation in 1889 United did not employ what would today be termed a manager. The side was coached by a trainer and a football committee selected the team and decided upon tactics they did appoint Joseph Wastenholm to the position of club secretary and he was responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the club, match day organization and dealing with players and contracts. Wastenholm oversaw a period of rapid growth for the team, culminating in 1899 when United won their one and only first division championship, after which he retired. Wastenholm was replaced by John Nicholson as secretary and he would remain in post for over 30 years until his death in 1932. Nicholson presided over the most successful period in the club's history as United became a leading force in English football, winning the FA Cup four times and regularly challenged at the top of the league but a second Division I title for the club eluded him. A new era, following the death of John Nicholson the United board turned to Chesterfield manager Teddy Davison to become the club's first real manager. The team were in decline however and were soon relegated for the first time in their history. Davison gradually rebuilt the side with astute signings and young players and regained top flight status but the club's post-war financial problems would jump a team building for years to come. Davison retired in 1952 and prompted the club to appoint Retherham United manager Reg Freeman as his successor. Freeman stabilized the team but fell ill and died in 1955 after which United turned to the inexperienced Joe Mercer but he struggled to cope with the team in decline and departed for Aston Villa in 1958. United then appointed Chester manager John Harris who inherited a talented but underperforming side which he transformed into a promotion team returning to Division I in 1961. Harris built a side based on local players and stabilized them in the top flight but financial issues soon prompted the sale of key players and United were eventually relegated once more. Harris opted to move upstairs to become general manager and handed the role of team manager to Arthur Rowley but he was sacked after one season following disappointing results. Harris returned as manager and guided the side to promotion once more but after a good start back in the top flight Harris confidence faded and he stepped down in 1973 to move upstairs for the second time. Rapid decline, experienced Blackburn Rovers manager Ken Furphy was the man United turned to replace John Harris. He initially did well but the team was aging and there was little money to replace players. After a good finish in his first season a disastrous string of results the following year led to Furphy being sacked in October 1975. Jimmy Searle was recruited from Notts County but he proved unpopular with both the players and fans and could not halt the decline, overseeing relegation and then being sacked in September 1977 with United at the bottom of Division II. The ambitious and colourful Harry Huslam was handed the reins and although many of his ideas were ahead of their time he built an ageing side based on star players at the end of their career. Now in the third division performances deteriorated still further and Huslam stepped down due to illness in January 1981. World Cup winner and then United player Martin Peters was promoted to the position of manager but United were relegated to Division 4 at the end of the season and Peters resigned. Moving on up, with a new ambitious board in place United recruited Ian Porterfield as manager in June 1981. He had an immediate impact, winning the Division IV championship in his first season and taking the club back into the second tier two years later on a meagre budget. Despite this many fans were unhappy with the style of football and Porterfield was sacked in 1986 following supporter protests. Coach Billy Masuan was promoted to the position of manager but failed to improve the standard of play and with attendances falling and the team in danger of relegation once more he was sacked in January 1988. United now turned to the colourful character of Dave Bassett who had most recently had a short, unsuccessful spell as manager of Watford. It was to prove an astute appointment as although he could not prevent relegation in his first season he built a solid, hard-working team on a small budget and won back-to-back -back promotions, 
returning the club to the top flight and achieving regular mid-table finishes. With the formation of the Premier League United's old financial problems and willingness to sell star players without replacing them meant the side eventually succumbed to relegation and when an immediate return was not forthcoming Bassett was sacked in December 1995. Comings and goings, the following years proved a turbulent time for United as they chased the ambition of Premiership football. Experienced Howard Kendall was recruited as manager and undertook a complete rebuilding of the side but left in June 1997 to take over at Everton. Player coach Nigel Spackman was promoted to replace Kendall but after initial promise he quit after only eight months citing boardroom interference. This was to become a recurring theme and replacement Steve Bruce would leave after only one season citing the same reasons. Adrian Heath then proved a disastrous appointment and lasted only six months before being sacked with United looking more likely to be relegated than promoted. The Blades then turned to experienced lower league manager Neil Warnock who managed to stave off relegation and began to rebuild the side on a meagre budget. Warnock proved a divisive figure with fans but after a number of mid-table finishes he achieved promotion back to the Premiership in 2006 but the side were relegated the following season prompting the board not to renew Warnock's contract. Just like Adrian Heath, the appointment of Brian Robson in 2007 proved an unpopular and unsuccessful one and he was sacked after less than a year following poor results and intense fan pressure. Former assistant manager Kevin Blackwell was appointed as Robson's replacement but despite reaching the playoff finals in his first full season the team was obviously in decline and he was sacked after only two games of the 2010-11 season. Worse was to come however as player coach Gary Speed was briefly promoted to manager but left after only a few months to take over the Welsh national side. Mickey Adams then became the third full-time manager of the season and oversaw a disastrous run of results which saw United relegated and Adams sacked after only six months in charge. With United in the third tier once more Danny Wilson was appointed as manager in June 2011. Despite protests from United fans over his previous association with crosstown rivals Sheffield Wednesday, Wilson guided the club to the League One playoff final in his first full season in charge, only to lose to Huddersfield Town. Despite the club challenging for promotion the following season, a poor run of results led to Wilson's departure in April 2013, being replaced by Chris Morgan until the end of the season. After a long search for a new boss former Scotland defender David Weir was appointed as Wilson's long-term replacement. Weir's tenure was short-lived however as he was sacked in October of the same year having won only one of 13 games in charge. After Chris Morgan had overseen the team for a brief time, Nigel Clough was appointed as Weir's permanent successor in October 2013. League History Seasons spent at Level 1 of the Football League system, 60 Seasons spent at level 2 of the Football League system, 42. Seasons spent at level 3 of the Football League system, 6. Seasons spent at level 4 of the Football League system, 1. Po equals position. P equals played. W equals won. D equals drawn. L equals lost. F equals goals for. A equals goals against. PTS equals points, honors. Division 1 Premier League, Champions, 1897 Euro 98, Runners Up, 1896 Euro 97, 1899 Euro 1900. Football League North, Champions, 1945 Euro 46. Division 2 Championship, Champions, 1952 Euro 53, Runners Up, 1892 Euro 93, 1938 Euro 39. 1960 a Euro 61, 1970 a Euro 71, 1989 a Euro 90, 2005 a Euro 06. Division 3 League 1, runners up, 1988 a Euro 89. Division 4 League 2, champions, 1981 a Euro 82. FA Cup, winners, 1899, 1902, 1915, 1925, runners up. 1901, 1936. Club records. Record league victory, 10 a Euro 0 away v Port Vale, Division 2, 10th December 1892 and 10 a Euro 0 home v Burnley, Division 1, 
January 19, 1929, record cup victory, 6 a Euro 1 on three occasions. The last being at home v Lincoln City, League Cup first round, August 22, 2000, record league defeat, 3 a Euro 10 away v Middlesbrough, Division 1, November 18, 1933, record cup defeat, 0 a Euro 13 home v Bolton Wanderers, FA Cup second round, February 1, 1890, highest home attendance, 68,287 v Leeds United, FA Cup fifth round, February 15, 1936, most league appearances, Joe Shaw made 631 appearances between 1948 to Euro 1966, most goals scored overall, Harry. Johnson scored 201 goals in 313 games between 1919 and Euro 1930, most goals scored in a season, Jimmy Dunn 41 goals from 41 appearances, Division 1, 1930 Euro 31, record transfer fee paid, a £4 million for James Beatty to Everton on August 4, 2007, record transfer fee received. A £8 million for Cal Norton and Cal Walker from Tottenham Hotspur in July 2009. In media and popular culture, United were, along with Arsenal, the first team to be featured in a live radio commentary. The Division I fixture between the two sides on January 22, 1927 was broadcast by the BBC. Club captain Billy Gillespie scored United's goal in the 1 Euro 1 draw, and listeners were provided with a numbered map of the pitch via the Radio Times to aid their understanding of where play was taking place. The area in front of the goalkeeper was numbered 1, with the game providing the first use of the phrase back to square 1. A number of films and television programs have included references to Sheffield United over the past few decades. The 1996 film When Saturday Comes stars Sean Bean as a part-time Hallam FC player who is scouted by Sheffield United, who then goes on to play in a FA Cup semi-final. The character Gaz in British comedy The Full Monty is seen wearing a replica United shirt at one part of the film, and promises his son a ticket for a game at Bramall Lane between Sheffield United and Manchester United. A scene in Batman Begins features a child wearing a 1990s Blades shirt. 2012 television drama Prisoner's Wives also references the club. Sheffield United are also referenced by Brian Blest's character in a third series episode of the BBC post-apocalyptic drama series Survivors from the 1970s. Blessed's character also wears a Sheffield United scarf throughout. In 1990, the BBC produced a six-part documentary series named United that followed the fortunes of the club towards the end of the 1989 Euro 90 season, in which they achieved automatic promotion to the top flight of English football. International links, as group executive director, Michael Farnan is responsible for the commercial development of the Sheffield United International Group. Sheffield United a Euro unregistered trademark s unique international football model began with the club purchasing high profile foreign teams in China and Hungary as well as becoming a major stakeholder with a leading Australian A League side. In January 2006, Sheffield United became the first foreign club to take over a Chinese team when they purchased the football club Xiong Wanou, based in the city of Xiong, China. The club was renamed the Xiong Blades after their new owners. Sheffield United shirts are now sold in China, and Xiong shirts are now sold in Sheffield, increasing revenue streams for both clubs. In February 2008, Kevin McCabe, the club's chairman, finalized an agreement with Budapest-based Funkvaros to buy its football team, and also negotiated with the Hungarian government to purchase and develop the ground around Stadion Albert Flakubd Real N. The development of a new all-seater football stadium with a capacity of 25,000 has been started. A match was played in Budapest to celebrate the link-up. The Blades also have operating business and exchange of ideas links with Central Coast Mariners of Australia and White Star Alua Copyright of Belgium. Affiliated clubs, Arklow Town, Buxton, Central Coast Mariners, Schund Blades, Estudiants, Zar Poundo Paulo, Strintime IL, Tata Football Academy, White Star Alua Copyright, Bibliography, Matthews, Tony. The Official Encyclopedia of Sheffield United Football Club
Britespot Publishing Limited. ISBN A1-904103-19-7A, Claire Ball, Dennis. Sheffield United Football Club. Chalford Publishing. ISBN 07524 1054 1059 8 Armstrong, Gary. Garrett, John. Sheffield United Football Club Euro The Biography. Hallamshire Publications Limited. ISBN A1 874718 65 2 References. External links. Official website, Sheffield United FC. On BBC Sport. Club News A Euro Recent Results A Euro Upcoming Fixtures A Euro Club Statistics